My name is Asia Sampson, and today on Baptism Overland, part four of our Jeep cargo storage. You know what? If you've been following the series, you already know what we're doing. Let's just get to it. All right, so the storage system is built and I am ready to start putting all of my stuff in there. But rather than just throwing everything in, I do have a couple of things that I want to do to just make it a little bit better. This video will be all about those final touches, those little details and little organizational techniques that I'm going to employ so that I have a system that really works the way I want. Now there's a couple of things that I'm doing and I will show you all the parts that I bought specifically just for each of those purposes. One being is finding a way to secure my bottle jack. Last off-roading trip I went on, my bottle jack was just in a toolbox and I just heard it just banging around in there because the bottle jack is heavy. So I just heard it just kind of going all over the place and there's really no way to kind of secure that somehow. So I am doing something to secure it in the toolbox that it kind of just stays put. I'm also wanting to get rid of one of the A-pillar bags that I have and I think I brought that up in the first video. Uh, I have two A-pillar bags right now. I want to keep one of them for quick access to some tools but right now I have both of them and the tools were just everywhere on both sides and I want to take all the tools from the left move them into the toolbox somehow and get rid of that A-pillar bag completely because it's also getting in the way of a plug that I'm using to power up my fridge. So I want to get rid of that A-pillar bag, get all the tools from there, find a way to put them into this new storage system that I have and I have a way of doing that as well. And then finally, of course, I'm going to tweak the drawer side of things and find a way to put all my overlanding gear in there. I have some ammo boxes and each of those ammo boxes I have labeled and I have parts for camping in each one of those and I'll show you that as well. So I want to find a way to secure those. So we're going to go ahead and get to it. I'll show you what I plan to do, but this is basically the last video of this series. So I hope you enjoy it. So to organize all of my gear and kind of just find a way to keep them all in their place, uh, I bought a couple of items here that we're going to be installing. Uh, first thing I got was this Molly panel that's made by Built Right Industries. I really like this. Very affordable. It's $30. They're not a big company. I think uh, he makes them in-house, uh, but you should check them out. But all you get with this kit is just a Molly panel and they give you a sticker. I'll probably put this in there somewhere. But it's just a Molly panel, so I had to go buy some hardware. Uh, got myself a couple of screws. Uh, got myself these screw spacers because you need to lift this off of the surface so that you can attach things to it. And then I bought some washers and nuts and that's this. And on that Molly panel I bought some really small uh, quick fists. I love these things man. I have so many of these in the Jeep already because they just help hold your gear so well. So I'll be attaching this to the Molly panel and this will basically hold my ball peen hammer and that'll keep that in its place so it's not flopping around inside the Jeep. And lastly I have this larger quick fist. Um, I've had this before. It's been sitting around in my garage. This was intentionally made to hold a fire extinguisher but I'm actually going to be using this to hold my bottle jack. Now structurally this is not meant to basically secure that bottle jack in place fully. Um, you know, all we're going to be doing is screwing this into the inside of the storage box. But it's just there so that my bottle jack isn't flopping around inside that storage box and banging up against things. So the bottle jack will actually just sit in the storage box and this will kind of hold it in place. Now in the event that the Jeep flips over, which I hope will never happen, uh, this will probably not hold that bottle jack tightly. It might just rip it right off because the bottle jack is so heavy. But the storage box does have a closure on it that will keep the bottle jack from flying out into the vehicle and hitting someone. So it's going to be secure in there. This is again just so that it's not rattling around inside that storage box sliding all over the place. This will just help keep it in place. So we're going to go ahead and attach all of this right now. We're going to do it one by one. We will start with the bottle jack holder and then we will move on to the molly panel. It's raining pretty bad outside today. I'm wondering if I can fit this Jeep into the garage without it hitting the roof rack so that I can work on it in here. Oh 
Oh my god, here we go. Will it fit? Will it fit? It goes slowly. Whoa, look how close that came. Any further and my shovel would have hit it, so just right. All right, so here we are inside the storage box that I built. I'm going to have my bottle jack right here on the corner, and that'll just kind of keep it in place. All right, so the next part is to add the molly panel. This will actually go on the inside of this lid, but the easier way for us to figure out where to put it is to go ahead and lay it out on the top on the outside, measure out where, punch the holes through, and then I can go ahead and put the bolts through and then to the other side and then install it that way. Okay, so before we attach the molly panel, we're gonna go ahead and attach the quick fist to this first. That way I don't have to sit there and mess with it while it's mounted up. It'll just be easier to mount the quick fist on here already, and then I can go ahead and mount this whole thing together. Okay, with the molly panel kind of set up and ready to take on some tools, we're gonna go ahead and mount this up. How we do that is we use these spacers here to keep this away from the surface of this. And then we use some nuts and some washers. Okay, so the molly panel is in place. Now let's go ahead and start putting our tools in. All right, so there are my tools nicely tucked in there. Everything's looking good. Good job, Built Right Industries. I like this molly panel a lot. I was able to mount my air down kit as well as a molly bag that I had and I was able to just kind of put some electronics in there and then I was able to mount my ball peen hammer so yeah looking good all right next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store some of my unused items into that hidden cubby where we cut out a hole in the platform that cubby already comes standard with the Jeep. I wanted to make sure that we still have access to it and not waste that space. And that's basically just as easy as removing the drawer completely. And now we have access to it down here. So what I'm putting inside there are my jumper cables. I don't need these anymore because I actually have a jump pack that I use now. So that can go in there. I also have these rods and these are the ones that hold my roof rack open whenever I need to tilt my roof back back but I will never do that my roof rack pretty much stays put so I don't need this to hold it in place but in the event that I need to then at least I know I'll have it in the Jeep.
Next thing I have are my stock sway bar links. I already have JKS adjustable sway bar links on the front. So obviously these are too short to fit, but in the event that one of those JKS sway bar links break, at least I have something that I can put in there. They're short, so they're not really meant to go back on with a lifted vehicle, but it's better having these than being, you know, SOL, right? Also got a clamp. I've never needed to use this, but it's always good to have in the event that you need to clamp something down if something breaks. And then finally, I have a bag of spare parts. I still have a lot of room, but I do plan to put an extra quart of oil, maybe some transmission fluid and brake fluid as well. Uh, but until I get those things for now, let's go ahead and put the drawer back on and conceal this whole thing. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is create a cover for this drawer. That way we can use this drawer as a tabletop when it's pulled out. Um, it's why I went ahead and put grooves on it when I created this thing so that I can just get a piece of plywood, cut it to size, and then I'll go ahead and put it right on top. So then when this is pulled out, we can set our drinks on it, we can cook on it, we can use it for a table without just having it for storage. So we'll have a little top here, I'll have a little hole on it so that you can open it up and then grab whatever you need from the inside. So that's what we'll make right now. All right, as far as overlanding gear is concerned, here are the items I want to put in there. I don't know why they're all green. Anyway, I have four ammo boxes. I bought these from someone on Facebook. They were selling them for like $5 for all four, so I decided to take advantage. And I basically use it as storage for different overlanding parts. The first one I have is power. Basically what's in there are extra battery packs. Um, extra batteries, things that I need to power stuff up. I have an extra amount of that in there. Next one I have is fire. That one has all my fire starting stuff in there. I have extra flints. Um, I have ferro rods. I have um, campfire cubes. Um, I have uh, lighters, uh, things like that goes in there. Then I have repellents. That's pretty self-explanatory. Mosquito stuff, uh, candles, sticks, those type of things, sprays, that goes in there. And then finally, I have illumination, and that is extra flashlights, um, extra fold-up lanterns that fits nice and tight in there. Uh, some of those Goal Zero lanterns that fold out, those are really cool. Um, I have extra headlamps uh, for anyone else that might need one. So all illumination stuff is in there. Then I'm going to put in my lantern because you don't want to go anywhere without that. Normally, I keep this in my camping box and I bring it around with me, but sometimes you need a lantern when you're not camping. So I just, I'm going to keep it in the Jeep so that way I'll have it at the ready. I also have the sleeping bag jacket. This actually belongs to my wife. And all this is is, is basically a sleeping bag that you can wear because you can put your arms out. There's holes in it for your arms. So you don't really sleep in this per se. Like it's not a sleeping bag that you sleep in. But she likes to wear it around the campsite, sit around the fire, it keeps her really toasty. My wife gets cold really easily. So I also have my AC power cord for my fridge. I've had this just kind of flopping around in the back of the Jeep, but I bring this with me in case we go to a place that actually has power. Then I can just plug up the fridge and not eat up the battery of the Jeep. And then I've got a hammock. I'm just going to pop that in there also. So whenever we need it, like at the park or whatever, when we're not camping, at least we still have it. So. Let's go ahead and put everything in. All right, I finally got everything in its place and my OCD is happy. 
starting with the Pelican case, I have my emergency roadside equipment stuff. I got a jump pack. I've got an emergency tarp that also doubles as an emergency blanket, or you could put it on the floor so you don't get dirty when you're changing out a tire or fixing something underneath the vehicle. Got some emergency lights, emergency flares. That all goes in there. So all that does, close this up. One hand operation. And then goes back into here. Right there. Inside, I've got my tools. I got my Adventure Tool Company uh, big bag. I got the tool roll. I've got WD 40. I've got a funnel in there. I've got my ARB tire repair kit. I got my uh, torque wrench. Uh, I got a breaker bar in there. Up here, I've got my ball peen hammer. I've got my air down kit. I've got uh, I think I believe my my uh, computer reader in there and then I've got the stuff for my bottle jack to uh, jack up the bottle jack which is right there behind here all tied and nicely put in its place with that quick fist so it's not going anywhere and this just easily this now over on the a pillar side of things I have my first aid kit I've got quick access tools that I always sometimes need when I need it. So in here is uh, one of those mirrors so that you can see uh, in areas that, you know, might be hidden with other components. You can use that to look. I've got a magnet, uh, you know, one of those magnet pens. So if you drop a screw somewhere and you need to grab that screw, then you have that extendable magnet pen. I've got, you know, one of these adjustable wrenches that can basically fit any socket. I barely use this because I actually have socket sets with me, um, but I like having this, uh, in, you know, for just in a pinch. And then I also have like a tire gauge reader back here. And then in this little pocket over here, I've got my tire pressure reader right there. So that's all stuck tucked in there. I've got work gloves up here inside the zipper. I'm not gonna open it, but I have my uh, a tube uh, to basically funnel gas uh, when I need it from my jerry cans. Of course, your fire extinguisher. On the other side, inside this actual case, I have some recovery gear and some straps. So with everything being in there and in there, I was now finally able to remove the other A-pillar bag and now that's where my bug out bag sits. It's out of the way. It used to just kind of flop around over here, but now it's out of the way when I need it, uh, but leaves all this room open now for any gear that I might have. It still doesn't impede the socket that is back there and that goes to my fridge and then finally in the drawer everything that i just told you that i was storing in there is now in there i did find some other extra things uh, tie down straps here i've got an extra emergency shovel there i've got repellents that are too big to fit in one of these i got repellents uh, sunscreen Leave that sunscreen uh, and some more repellent so just put other liquids in there everything is good and that will now allow me to put the cover on that we made last night put that back in here and that is it Right, guys if you made it this far congratulations that's four videos specifically dedicated to the overhaul of my storage system in the back of my Jeep what do you guys think let me know in the comments because I am proud of it like I said there are some mistakes but honestly they're not huge mistakes that it's so noticeable I think I'm the only one that's really gonna notice these mistakes and no one's really gonna be scrutinizing this thing and looking for all those mistakes unless you do and if you do then you know go do something else with your life rather than sit there and figure out what people are doing wrong 
Anyhow, I really enjoyed this build. I had so much fun just building it and I think that's what's important. I mean, that's what it's really all about. It's about building things yourself, having fun, making it meaningful for you and customizing it in a way that fits your needs. Because there are tons of products out there, some very, very expensive and some may do this but doesn't do that and then this one might do this but doesn't do that. And we sit there and we shop for products over and over and over until we find one that works for us. Well, I love the DIY aspect sometimes because then you can just create it the way you want it to function. You can create it so that it works for you. And that's what I love about this channel is us being able to find solutions for ourselves. What might work for me may not necessarily work for you. And I am glad for what I've built because now I can't wait to try it out on our next trip, see if it's actually functioning the way I want and making some adjustments if it doesn't. But for now, I'm loving it and I'm glad that you stuck around. I hope you enjoyed the video as well. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Also, let me know again if you like the hoodie. Let me just show it a little bit better. I made this myself. I'm thinking about opening up a Baptism Overland store. Not sure yet. Depends on how many of you actually want Baptism Overland gear. I'm thinking patches, shirts, hats, that type of stuff. So let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson, and I will see you next time. <laughs>